Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. Donald Trump is in the news a lot lately. If you haven't heard about him, he's running for the U.S. presidency as a Republican. And, and I'm thinking uh, he, he's become so part of, of the public experience that what if your, your own name was Donald Trump? Say you're some guy living in some small town in Missouri or living out in, you know, in Colorado and, 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 and your name happens to be Donald Trump. And for a long time, when people in your local community knew you, they associated you with your name. But all of a sudden, this guy named Donald Trump's on the, on the news, is on the radio, he's everywhere in, in, in media, and all of a sudden, your name has been co-opted by someone else. And I'm thinking, wow, that would be a horrible disaster for someone to experience. I, I was looking in, in the 411 down in the States, and there are 42 people who are listed as Donald Trump in the phone directory. And of course, most people are actually listed under their initial, D. Trump, if they even have a listing. And yet there are 42 people who have the name Donald Trump or, or in the phone directory. There are nine Hillary Clintons. Can you imagine that you've grown up, your name's Hillary Clinton, and all of a sudden this person comes along and they become very famous, and they kind of steal your name from you. There are four Barack Obamas. You're just a normal guy going through life, and all of a sudden, someone gets elected president of the United States whose name is Barack Obama, and now the primary association, even in your own circle of friends and family, with, with the name is with the president and not you. There are 10 Halle Berry's, 10 George Clooney's. There's even, I looked at our system, six Stephen Harper's. Imagine your name's Stephen Harper, and all of a sudden, uh, this very infamous or famous prime minister gets elected with your name. And, and your name's been taken from you. It's stolen from you. The very thing that makes you special, even in your own small circle in life, has been taken from you. I had this experience recently. I had a phone call, and, and someone called me down from the States. I think it was from Kentucky, and he had a little draw, and he said, Hi, is this Pastor Mark Rutledge? And I said, Oh, yes, it is. He says, Well, I was watching you on TV last night, and I, I, I was listening to you talk about your book, 30 Seconds, and I was wondering if I could buy that book from you. And I'm thinking for a moment, I paused, because I didn't write the book. I'd always wanted to write a book, but, but not because I had anything special to say, just because it would look so good to have my name on a cover. And, and I'm thinking for a second, but I was mostly taken by the fact that there's another Pastor Mark Rutledge in the universe. I thought I was the only one. And, and I did a little exploration after the phone call and, and found out that there's lots of Pastor Mark Rutledges out there. I'm not the only one. This guy was having a hard time tracking down the pastor Mark Rutledge he was looking for, and that's how I got the call. But my name had been co-opted in a sense. I had lost my specialness. And you, and you might have known that in your own life, that, that experience of losing that very thing that makes you who you are, at least in the public world. And this can happen on so many different levels in our lives, and, and it can happen in so many different ways. You know, we identify ourselves with brands. That's part of our identification. We identify ourselves with brands. Uh, I, uh, you know, you drive a Toyota or a Nissan or a GM or a Ford, or you, you buy this kind of clothing or these kinds of shoes. And then you find out very, very quickly that you're not unique that way at all, that these brands have been marketed to lots and lots of people, and you share this identification. So you have to find other places to make you special, and, and we find it more and more difficult to be special in this life, something that makes us unique in our part of our own identity. And one of the things that we realize here at Trillium is that if you put emphasis on that outward sense of specialness, you're, you're going to be dangled by the world. The world is going to start pulling your strings, and they're going to start having control over you. And, and for us here at Trillium, we've come to the realization that there is a kind of specialness, but it's not found in the car you buy, or the kinds of clothes you buy, or the shoes you buy, or the brand names of uh, furniture you have in your home, or where you shop. It's found in a uniqueness that God has created us in, a, a love that's universal, yet it's found a unique expression in our lives. It's come, it comes out through us, and it's meant to be identified as we go in and seek out that inner nature that we have been given, the divine nature. You know, God loves all people in all ways, but yet God loves each one of us in a very special and unique way as a unique expression of the universal truth of love. So let the practice of your life not be built around brand purchasing, but more on giving and receiving love. In its perfect way, you are giving expression to your true, special nature.